Hey, hey, it's Filet. You're watching Filet TV, the ultimate YouTube channel. I'm no cinematographer, just a dude with the camera. All right, today we're going to look at one of my favorite barn finds. It's a 1964 super stock Dodge Max Wedge factory aluminum nose car that I found parked on a driveway not too far from where I live. So I met this guy, Bob Johnson, who was the owner of it. He had owned it. He had bought it from his buddy back in 1972 after... Um, the guy returned from Vietnam and um, I saw it parked there and I hit him up and it took me a couple of years to get it off of him, but he told me it was a max wedge. Okay, fine. That's what everybody calls a two door post car. So we sparked the deal and, you know, I got it home, got it running, drove it around the block a handful of times. I was pretty stoked. It was a bitch in the little car. And my intention was just to build a max wedge clone. So he gave me a call and said, you know, come by his house. He's got some stuff for me to pick up. And he was also going to give me the, you know, the M plate that goes underneath the dash for me to run and find all the information out myself. So I did, you know, I started looking around at the car and, you know, you can tell it's all original. It's never been messed with. You can see push button dash. You see the interior was just dirt, dirty. It had a Mustang uh, cassette player from a Mustang, you know, pretty funny. And, uh, you know, the motor was a date code, like February 1967, 440 base. Somebody had put a two barrel on it because he wanted to drive this thing around a little bit. And mind you, the car's only got 31,000 miles on it. So I started cleaning out the trunk. And then I come across this, you know, scutch in here with the five holes in it and realize that's how to mount the battery. And I even found the battery pad that the battery sits on. So I got the battery. And then I noticed on the windshield, there's this sticker that said, shipping and handling and you could tell it had been on there since original i started looking on the internet and sure enough here's the sticker it says the maximum performance engine tells you how to load the car you know because these things leaked oil and you don't want to drop it on anything on a chrysler new yorker you know so i went to the guy's house and he also gave me the aluminum front fenders which you can see do not touch was written in 1964 i also got the the grill support also made out of aluminum he gave me all the Bumper, I mean, yeah, all the bumper brackets made out of aluminum. You can see it's got, you know, the, the Mopar part numbers on there. And stuff is even stamped with the word aluminum on there. Pretty trippy. So it was the real deal. And there you go. Look at the, all the bumper brackets. So the thing's a real deal. So I put all the parts on it, you know, had it hanging around the house. The thing looks, you know, nice, a little bit tattered, but, you know, it's original paint. So I started digging a little deeper into the car. And, you know, we ran the, the numbers through the Chrysler historical society find out it's a mr norm's car and um this guy's had the thing forever <clears throat> so as you can see this thing was cut for wheel wall headers at one time it was a drag racer so i went and got new exhaust from t ti um you know three inch with the cutouts you know the three inch dumps on it just like the factory one and then i got the chrysler report and look you can see it underlined in red grand spalding dodge and this car is really funny because it was ordered with you know 14 inch rims and hubcaps and galen did the write-up on it and it's you know doesn't have anything about the padded dash on here otherwise it would make it a one of one but it's definitely a one of two car and there's a little bit more information from the chrysler registry so i've got this on all the all the different registries that are out there because it is the real deal then Rob Wolf from Mopar Collector's Guide wanted to take some pictures of it. So he did. I let him, you know, have his way with it. And he took a bunch of pictures. And then the next thing you know, a couple of months later, great magazine coverage found aluminum nose, you know, Mopar. And I was really surprised he did a phenomenal write-up on those. Lots of pictures. You know, there's even a great picture right here where there's a, you know, you can see this used to have a Mr. Norm sticker on the trunk. And somebody scraped it off with a razor blade. But you can see, I mean, he did a great write-up. A whole story that I know about this car from, from Bob. And you can see, I really cleaned the motor up. You know, got a new intake. I found in the trunk, I found the exhaust manifolds. I found a set of seats and just dyed them red because my seats were literally just the springs. And I take this thing out once in a while. Usually for the spring fling, I take it out. I clean it all up. You know, give it a wash job. I don't really wax it, but... You know, you can see the paint still looks really well for, you know, original 1964 paint. I even found these purple license plates with 1964 Chicago license plates. I found them zip tied under the back seat, which is amazing. 
So this car, it's really clean. I'm really stoked about it. But, you know, it sits in storage most of the time. I, I rarely use it. But I do take it out like once in a year. I say, clean it up, take it out to the spring fling every once in a while. And then after the car show, it goes back into storage, put a car cover on it, fill it full of junk and let it sit. And, you know, it's been to the shows and all the guys, you know, Greg Lane and all these guys have, you know, checked the car out and it's definitely authentic. And they're pretty stoked to be able to see something like that. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked to have it. You know, I've had it for about 10 years and, you know, I don't get it to use it much, but every once in a while I air up the tires and roll it out, you know, give it a good wash job, um, clean out the interior, fire it up, maybe take it around the block once or twice. And then once I'm done with it, I push it right back into storage. But the car shines up nicely. I mean, I have never put a, a drop of wax on this. And you can see it does, you know, clean up nicely. But like I said, once I'm done with it, it gets pushed back in the garage, put back into storage, and I wait usually another year. Anyways, I hope you guys like this little video. You know, I've had this car for 10 or 12 years, and it's been a lot of fun. So if you like it, give me a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe and find me on Facebook.